Sup you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video, another reaction video to our man Ethan Payne, aka one seventh of the Sidemen, aka Bazinga, aka Bez. We're watching his YouTube original series where he takes on the London Marathon. This was last year. The reason why I looked this guy up is because apparently, you know, you guys couldn't help but tell me either he's my doppelganger or my son. And, um, well, I don't think he's my son because his biological father left when he was, before he was even born, and his stepdad that he thought was his biological father left when he was 13. So he's been through a lot and I respect him. And we're about to continue this journey into his, his life and, you know, how he's overcome all the challenges that he's, he's been through. So with that said, let's watch episode number two. Of three. This is how I became who I am. Teenage Cancer Trust have asked me to run the London Marathon and there's no other answer than yes. When I started this journey, there really was no athletic ability inside of this body. Virus is ruined in the world. It's kind of hard to find motivation to push yourself. It's just been really, really tough. I'm going to go to the toilet. He was turned into alcohol. He wants everybody to think he is Bazinga. I literally made him shit himself. Firewalk must employ mind over matter. I love my friends so much. Ethan in three words. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> Determined. The height of Everest in four days on this staircase. And opinionated. The people that ask the questions are weird. They are weird. They are so odd. My goals have never been to be someone in the public eye or recognised. I knew that there was an audience to be gained for something but it was mainly to be gained, from my eyes, for creating something that other people would enjoy. No, what is that? My brother used to call him the boy in the room because he only ever spoke to people online. I think it's such a shift now, but at the time, if people knew that he was making gaming videos online, you were sort of viewed as just like, <laughs> you're a bit weird, mate. I used to say to him, something's gonna come at this, I just know. The first video, I think, is 2012. It was Fours of Drift videos. Moving into FIFA 13 was when it really hit off, and that was because I bumped into other creators. Ethan, again, was someone who didn't show his face at the start. Showing your face for the first time on the internet, which I was extremely scared about. I thought I was a big wreck. I was a fat, ugly mess. It was just the voice, and then he'd done a grand reveal. First time doing a vlog on this channel. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Woo he used to film absolutely non-stop, 24-7. Autopilot, wake up, one video, bang. Edit it, put it out, have some lunch. Edit another video, bang. Just went straight to the sparing. We've definitely got something in common. That's basically how I've lived my life for the last three years straight. Why don't stay in creative side, man? When my channel started gaining success, 100,000 subscribers was absolutely mind-boggling. And you think, oh, I've got this many views this day. I've got this many subscribers this day. And it's like, oh my God, ah, everything good's happening. We're growing, growing, growing. Even but I'll tell you what comes with that. The sense that you'll never have enough. And that can start to play on your mind. And I believe that's what happened to this guy. To this day, it's still mind blown with all their side members. Anthony so Joshua! People screaming his name. I don't think any of us realise the sheer size of a community you can grow by being yourself on the internet. The boys have become his family. We've been through so much together. I don't know what my life would have been like without him. A lot of people say, how long do you see yourself doing this? But. I started from a place of just wanting to do it as a passion. I'll probably still be knocking a video out every now and then when I'm 30. <laughs> Fuck, I am 30. <laughs> we're doing good, mate. We're getting the road miles in. We hit eight yesterday, yeah. and we chucked in a couple before that, so we're probably about 50 this week. That was great, but it's not even a marathon. In the last time, you have to do it in one sitting. So yeah. we need to up the levels, so I'm gonna run with you. I'm up for that. But I'm not doing a marathon. I'm not doing a half marathon. I think you should do a half marathon. But what are you doing? I have an idea. What's your idea? Right, Vic, why are we on the roof? And why are there two treadmills? 
Right, okay, you're gonna do a marathon, that's gonna be outside, in nature's elements. Okay. So, you're going for the four hour marathon, this is a half marathon, two hours, 120 minutes, that means we need you at around nine minutes a mile. However, I'm just doing the first mile, so we thought we would bring along a whole host of other amazing people, and they'll each do a mile with you, so you have some company in your okay. training, you'll be coming along one after the <laughs> so, How good! 13 different friends. Yes, amazing! You are. All right. Let's do it. Oh, good. So, joining you today, Ethan, we have Jack Mate, Bambino Becky, we have Teenage Cancer Survivor in Lake Walkington. Yes, yeah, excited, been waiting to train with him. We also have Els the Witch. Oh my god. <laughs> Your footballing pals from Thames Ironwork. Yes, the boys. We also have <laughs> Layla Annerley and Howie Star Diags. Unreal, I can't believe it. <laughs> Next up, we have our real brains behind the Bazinga channel, Charlie Donald. Oh no. Oh, I don't want to run with them. We also have Gabrielle Say. Decent, I like it. Olympic gold medalist Christine O'Horrigan. Salt. And Julia Hardy. Oh, lovely. We also have five times freestyle football world champion. You know who it is. It's Andrew Anderson. <laughs> and the personal trainer that was there at the start of it all. Dina. Decent. What a boy. Right, it's time to. Believe it or not, I do know one of the 13 people. And that is Gabrielle Say. He's a fitness YouTuber. And that's, that's about it. Get started, time to get on the treadmills, and I'm gonna thrash all of you guys. Okay. Smoke we'll you see, all. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Smoked. Oh, uh, press start bit. All right, the first mile, what pace are we doing? It's nine minute mile, 6.7 miles an hour. I've got the timer on, I've got the pacer on, and this will be it, that's. Welcome to the club, the running club. Ethan's running club. EP, Ethan Payne. Yeah. Running gang. EP's running gang. We found our pace now. I can chug along for it, nothing wrong with you now. Alright, there we go, that's my I'll send in. So personally, I decided to do a half marathon in training for my marathon too, but it was two weeks out. And <clears throat> I was able to get under two hours. And due to the fact that I did that, I thought it would be easy, a breeze, to double that and get under four hours for my marathon. But it wasn't. A nice companion. Thank you, boy. Seems a Do you want to know a secret? Yeah. I can't run. <laughs> I can't run. Let's smash this one. Right oh, then. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Right. So you're running for two days to come to trap? Yeah, so I've got the most of that now. How come you chose that? My family has like a history of cancer and stuff like that. So, it just seemed like the perfect fit. So, <laughs> I think that possibly could be the weak link, you reckon? Mate, I'm, I don't want to say it, but I'd like to say I'm fit as a fiddle. They want me to get in your rent, mate. Well, okay. Because all the other guys have been encouraging me, but yeah. I'm not any of that, mate. Okay. I've been to win. Right. Oh, mate, this is all fun. I'm running heavy. Those coffees have not sat well. This poo is ever urging now. Oh, mate. Red Death Con 5. It's here. I think it might be go time. That's what I do to people get in his head. I really thought I'd be able to do it without shooting. Right, bang. I'm going to go to the toilet. <laughs> I literally made him shit himself. <laughs> Absolute bottle. What, what the fuck? Where's well, Ethan? I'm not doing the second half on my own. Really? Come on! He's gonna show up. Are we taking breaks? Is that what this is gonna be like? Come on! Ethan! Yes! This is not on, man! Sauce it, mate. Ready? We're back! How seriously is this being taken? It's a minor blip. These things happen. Right, let's go. I hope they count that time into his two hours. He set his goals really, really high and he's done amazingly. I think the best thing is that I've seen with you, you're just so inspiring. Like to hear where you've come from. Thank you. And where you're going. So I think you really will have to find out the feeling of. Thank you very much. So, I'm going to do mine for one day. You need yeah. to yeah. Okay. <laughs> that means so much to me. <laughs> He's come out here doing kick ups. Let's <laughs> see if I'm getting around the world. Go on. He's doing around the world. It's quite funny. When I heard about his story. Look at that soft touch. Yeah. And he wanted to get involved. It really inspired me as well because obviously we're both running for the same cause. You've been through it yourself. Yeah, exactly. You've got the mindset and everything it takes to push yourself and get through literally anything in the world trying to do. The main thing was uh, just not overthinking it. Yeah. And just thinking about getting across the line. So I guess it is kind of like the marathon. So they're going to be doing it together. 
I think he's in a good place right now, just battling through it, just going hard. He's got a good mindset on him as well, especially coming up to this, so I'm proud of him. I remember our sessions, you lost how much in weight? Three and a half stone. Three and a half stone. So this was his original personal trainer. 17 and a half. And this man helped me start. Let's do it, my guy. Let's do it. 13! Go on! Yeah, you are breathing. I'm so happy. I'm gonna do it under two. I'm gonna do it under two! I'm gonna finish under two! Come on! 0.3k. Last little bit, best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, 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 come Thank you. Thank you very much. My guy. And we'll save that. 21.1. Boom. Now on a flat surface, I believe he might actually get under four hours. So that's the difference. When we first started, he was overweight, unhealthy, and we changed that. And then once we've broken the ice, he just broke down every barrier. Hey, hey. So I'm very proud of him from where he came to where he is now. You must stay at home. People will have already been carrying the virus. Cheers, Boris. In case of this virus will restrict the spread. We are the NHS, we are the NHS. Wash your hands. Many lives will be lost. It's a bit morbid. The world's crumbling in front of our very own eyes. I've just had my wisdom teeth out, this side of my mouth. Whoa, look at that big boy. <laughs> And I'm on a soft diet. I went down to Tesco's and there's absolutely nothing there that I can even eat. It really is just carnage. Fuck. Oh. I've got pot noodle. I managed to find pot noodle. The first months, I struggled quite a lot. It's just being knocked out of a pattern that you're working towards so much. And you, it's really hard to find motivation doing nothing. Especially when I enjoyed my training program where I'd go to the gym or going out on a run. Having that just stripped away from you was difficult and then just being stuck inside. Boris did a speech and he's made a Nando scale out of COVID alert. I feel like you can get quite sick of your mates if you're with them 24 hours, seven days a week. Like, I know you want to kick my head in, but you always don't know that I'm going to kick your head in sometime. Oh, that cave is ending. It was quite difficult. I didn't like it. What's happened, mate? The London Marathon's been postponed due to coronavirus. I mean, I was sort of... Oh, I sort of knew this was going to happen, but it's been postponed to Sunday the 4th of October. Six months? months? The marathon being cancelled will be very annoying to him. Virus is ruining the world! Coronavirus! Absolutely ruining the world. He's a better man than me because he'll just piss me off if I cancel this whole thing. And say, sack it off, I'm not, I'm not doing that. He is gutted that the marathon isn't going to happen the way you want it to happen. I always had the hope, but it was just up in the air. And I hate things being up in the air. I like knowing exactly what I'm doing, so it was mayhem. Maybe the universe has said, you're going to the marathon this year? In the lockdown, I got fat. Last week, I was 86.3 kilos, which is a record high, because there's nothing to do about for me. <laughs> it tore my training regime to tatters. Oh, look. He won't be liking that. He'll keep working on himself and improving himself and waiting for another opportunity to prove that he has improved. How? Lean in lockdown. The blackboard always comes in handy. But I've never seen anyone do rear doubt flies with books, but I've got to give him credit. Whenever I have something on this blackboard, I feel a lot better. Anyway. I've got formulas now on how to work out by cutting calories and stuff like that. So, last week we started at 84.6 kg, I'm now 83 and a half, so that's already a kilogram drop in the wall. It's kind of hard to find the motivation to push yourself, but I feel like this is a, a nice kickstart to get myself back motivated again. I had a video call with Eddie Hall. Ethan, there you are. Yes, how are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? Better now for locking in and talking to you. <laughs> oh, good to hear. I haven't had anyone that's personally been affected by the actual virus or anything. So hearing someone share his experiences with me was quite something. My grandma um, suffered with dementia very badly. Mm -hmm. I actually went in for myself. She kept begging for me to go in and have a coffee and a biscuit and a book. Yeah. And uh, yesterday uh, we found her dead in the back garden. That was a real tough thing for me to sort of digest that. Yeah. 
mm. losing losing my grandma doing this has just been really really tough. But mm. <clears throat> life goes on, as they say. Just everything that you've been through already, and then that is absolutely blowing my mind. It puts things into perspective, especially when I would wake up and for a week feel like I'm having a crap time because of everything that the world's going through or whatever. So it was really nice to have a chat with someone and just round things off and take a step back. I think people also are starting to become a little bit more aware of the mental health side of things and I feel like you've probably got a lot to say on that. Yeah, 100% mental health is something that I've actually struggled with since I was a very young teenager, you know, treated for that with all sorts of medications then that led to depression. Got myself in a very, quite a dark, horrible place. You know what the hardest thing was? Not having anyone to talk to. In lockdown, a lot of people have become a lot more aware of mental health and, and the issues that it presents. Men don't really talk about mental health issues. We don't really cover any of those topics. Even as a, us as a friend group, we rarely ever touch on it unless someone's really like visibly down in a bad place. I've got shivers because we certainly have more in common than I'd ever expect. Um, uh, he's got maturity beyond his years because I, I, I couldn't talk, I, I, didn't, I, I, I wasn't affected in that way at that age. I couldn't talk like that, that maturely about those certain subjects at that age. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have talked about my mental health five years ago, but I've slowly but surely opened up and, and you know, now I can openly talk about it because when you do have, you know, you, you, once you've worked through mental health struggles yourself, uh, the, really one of the only re, one of the only ways you can ever work through it and come out on the other side is to talk about it, right? So, I mean, and then you can op pretty much openly talk about it for the rest of your life, I suppose. Even if you are, if you're good or bad, uh, you can talk about it, and that's so important. Just started my twenties because that's where I was intoxicated and doing nothing with my life. I felt like I was just existing in a shell. I was intoxicated seven days out of seven. I remember living in a flat underneath him and used to go up. He would be half a bottle of JD and he would be smoking his lungs away. He was turning to alcohol to deal with all his feelings, all his emotions. I think it was a coping mechanism and just going through a lot of battles in your head where you think, I'm not good enough, I don't really think I'm applying myself, I don't think I'm going to go anywhere. My relationships aren't great, my friendship have nothing to think about it. And you're sort of hidden and you're trapped in your own mind. That side of him is his worst trait, that he wants everybody to think he is Bazinga and I'm happy and I'm famous for my laugh, so I've got to put that persona on. Is it? And sometimes <laughs> it's quite hard behind the scenes. I remember telling him he needs to stop the drinking. Stop drinking so Imagine much. being famous for a laugh and then being completely and utterly depressed, but having to put that laugh on for your content to continue your, your career. That is some hard shit, man. You're drinking way too much. That's some heavy a close shit. friend of him, it's really scary to see someone in that state because you want to help them as much as you can, but you don't want to push too much that they, they end up going away from you. I didn't want to be anymore. I didn't want to be here anymore because I felt like I wasn't good enough. I felt like I was letting everyone down. I felt like I was just a burden to absolutely everyone. I felt that like I was the shit heap that everyone was dragging along. It was possibly one of the most heartbreaking things to see, is to see a friend go through such troubles and there's nothing really that you can do apart from be there for you. He was saying quite a few worrying things he can't go on and it was all getting too much, the pressure was too much and he was struggling. Uh, I think when you end up going down that rabbit hole... Tell you what you guys, tell you what. After the month I've been through setting myself up here in Rockhampton, if you've watched any of my vlogs recently, you'll know that I've felt similar things, man. I really have. I've felt similar, similar things. And, geez, this is a, this is a perfect time to be watching this. I could never have expected that I'd be taken down this much of a, a dive on this guy. I thought, I thought, I thought his content was all, yeah, all, all comedy based. I mean, all gaming and skits and laughing and everything like that. But at the end of the day, man, don't you know, like some of the biggest comedians in the world are the most 
unhappy you know and it's that's their way of trying to trying to, to to deal with that and you just never know from the outside you would never know until until they speak until they speak up and sometimes they never do speak and it's it's all too late um aka robin williams you know what i mean you end up just talking yourself into stupid things and i remember ethan's girlfriend at the time knocking on my flat door and she was crying and i was like yo what's going on what's going on this is at like 4 a.m in the morning and she's telling me that Ethan's not in a good state and he's gone out. I was very drunk and I ended up getting in the car and I left the flat with no intention of going back to the flat. Then you know, he fell down. He's in a GTR for God's sake. He's drunk and he's thinking like that. That is a rip. I mean, you can kill yourself in that car when you're feeling on top of the world, let alone when you're feeling suicidal. Holy shit. Uh, that he felt that he had to even end his life right now. I was panicking, I didn't know what to do. In your head, you've now wiggled yourself down to meaning nothing. Fuck. You don't really find any reason to be knocking about anymore. And that's where I'd ended up at like three o'clock in the morning. And I'd sort of convinced myself that now was the perfect time to just make myself disappear. Thankfully, in the end, Ethan got in contact with people and he let them know that he was safe and he was coming home. It's weird how the world works, but I just got to a point and I sort of pulled the car over and I, it just hit me. I was like, what are you doing, mate? That was a very, very scary period for me because I didn't know if I was going to see my friend again, really. He's having like a mental breakdown and he just like collapsed into my arms and was just crying. I love my friend so much. Yeah, I will cry. I have done before. I love my friends. He is lucky he had his friends to 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 fall on there. Fitness. No wonder he loves him so much. Of course they saved his life. Definitely. The fitness journey that he's recently been on and the transformation he's been on has helped him times ten to where he is now in a happier place. And you can think about absolutely nothing apart from my heart's beating this fast and my feet are going like this. And that's quite therapeutic. He would have just gone down this dark path I and mean, he could have just got worse I and feel that. worse and maybe he wouldn't have got out of the car. The training is definitely something he's taken seriously, going for runs every day. He is very passionate about going to the gym and his fitness and his health overall. And not just running for the sake of running, really trying to improve himself, trying to learn how to pace himself. It's all been a learning curve, but there's also benefits from it. It just kickstarts everything again. So, I just got a message from Master Wong and he told me to meet him at the London Stadium, which is here in the back. Look at the glasses, man. <laughs> Don't you just love him? I'm not really sure what to expect, but I don't have any idea what's going to be in that stadium waiting for me. Oh, it's the hot coals. Oh, no. What are we doing? I'm very confused. <laughs> I'm very, very confused by what we're going to be doing here. Hello, Bazinga. It's Mikael Antonio. Welcome to the London Stadium, home of the Hammer. <laughs> Normally, my feet are on fire in the stadium, but tonight it's your turn. Tonight, the cameras are all on you. So do this, and you'll be ready to take on the marathon. Good luck. <laughs> That's class. I'm gathering an idea now of what we're going to be doing here. I'm gonna walk on that, aren't I? I am Master Wong, a true master of mind over matter training. You have come a long way on your marathon journey. Now you only need to travel a short distance over burning hot coal. This fire is over 1000 degrees. This challenge will give you the inner strength to combat anything that's holding you back. Remember, firework must employ mind over, over matter. matter. I felt my heart rate jump because not many people have or will walk across hot coals and it takes a lot of cojones to get across a burning bed of coals. Ready? 
The younger me would definitely never have done this. The more life experiences you go through, whether they're bad or good, they mature your mind, and that's why I've sort of got to this point now where I feel ready to chuck myself into whatever comes up. How does this work? Ready. Oh my god. No training? Mind over matter, all right? I'm so proud of myself. You compete, you in the string challenge. Now you're ready for your marathon. Holy shit. Oh, lads, I'm a bit emotional. <laughs> Did it. How'd you feel? Didn't even <laughs> feel anything. You look. <laughs> <laughs> give him a hug, give this him a hug, mate. I feel like I'm finally ready to do something I've ever felt this ready to do anything in my life. And um, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. I just want to play a coach. <laughs> 25 now, growing up, I feel like I've been through my fair share of shine. And it's the first time I feel happy with where I'm at heading into the future. And I think that's what hit me at the end. When I signed up to do the marathon, that was already something quite extreme in itself, considering I'd never run a 5k before. And then along the way, we've run up. So that was at his peak physical performance. And then the whole place got shut down. The marathon six months later. I don't know when exactly he's walking across the coals, but I, I assume it's closer to the date of October, so... A half with all my friends, we've done the truck pulling, we've done walking across cold. I think this challenge has just given me that belief that once I say go, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna finish it. I've never been more ready for something in my life. Jeez, don't break his knuckles, mate. So I've been at home now for, I think, the last two weeks because I felt a little bit ill. In the current climate of how things are, I decided to take a COVID home test. Oh boy. Test name, COVID-19, positive. He'd been training so much and he was so ready for it. I worry about him getting puffed out. Come on, let's go! Having a positive COVID test this close to the marathon changes everything. Sure does, man. What a series. What a series, man. It's not, it's not just about the marathon. I thought it was. I thought it was going to be all jokes, all laughs, all happy days until the marathon day and he goes and kills it. Well, that's certainly not the way it is. And, and you know what? It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a, proper, a proper series if, if it was all rosy, you know? Life ain't like that. Life is like a box of chocolates. And you know the rest. Anyways, guys. Um, I've been inspired. I haven't, I literally have not been for a long distance run since I did my marathon. I am, well, I actually got an injury about a week after on my knee that hasn't really felt perfect since. But after watching this and after what he's gone through, I'm going to say fuck it and I'm going to get back out on that pavement, put my shoes on and go for a run. It's going to be 10 k's, it's going to be a good start and it's gonna be after we finish this series. So we got one more video to go. I wanna say thank you for watching, and peace out. Will he make four hours? I'm not sure. I don't know, I don't think he will. I reckon he'll be four, I, I, I just don't know. But we'll see.